One of the most important parts of any 3D game would be the camera system. You might have made a first person camera only to wonder how you could make a cutscene or a single cut style camera, which could be quite difficult using the standard camera system in Godot. As a fun game, if you spot a problem with my code or methodology, comment what is wrong down below. I'll add a heart to the first person to comment on each mistake. I put at least one in this episode intentionally. I'm hoping this game will foster friendly discussion on alternative strategies and methodologies. What I am making for the Invasion of Terrace is a camera stack, which means that I have multiple virtual cameras on a stack, which is a first in, first out data structure. What this means is anytime a new virtual camera is added, it overrides all previous cameras. And when the current virtual camera is removed, it reverts to the previous camera. Some of this functionality is readily available using the existing camera code, but by implementing a virtual camera system, I can also choose to interpolate between different cameras to create a smoother transition between states. If you're familiar with God of War's single take marketing ploy, this is one way you could achieve that in your game. Here we have a first person controller scene and a basic script for the controller. We also have the standard camera here as well. The first person controller I am using is similar to the controller made in the Godot Mono FPS tutorial series, so I will be skipping an explanation of how it works. Comment down below if you want me to go over how I made this controller script in detail. First we need to make an auto load camera, which will serve as the main camera throughout the game. I like to follow the Cinemachine naming style from Unity, because that's what I'm familiar with. So this will be called the camera brain. Then we can make another node type called Virtual Camera that extends from Marker 3D, which is the new name for Position 3D in Godot 4. You could just as easily extend from Node 3D. However, by extending from Marker 3D, we automatically get the visual gizmo for the position in the editor, which makes it easier to visualize where the virtual camera is. Now for the camera brain, we need to make some singleton methods. This pattern ensures that there is only ever one at a time, just in case we accidentally add one to a scene. Additionally, we are going to store a stack of virtual cameras. There should only ever be one stack of cameras, so we can make this a static variable. Now we need two static functions, add camera and remove camera. These will add and remove the virtual cameras to the stack. Then we can make the process and physics process functions where we will peek at the top of the stack and apply that transform to the camera brain's transform. Be sure to use global transforms to ensure you get the exact positions in 3D space. Now we can jump into the virtual camera class and implement the enter tree and exit tree functions. Because of how scene loading works, this lets us add a virtual camera into a small scene and then load that scene when we want the camera to override and unload that scene when it is done. Because of the stack data structure, we will revert to the previous camera when popping off the temporary camera, which should usually be the first person camera. Now we just need to replace the camera node in the first person controller with a virtual camera. When we run this, it should look exactly the same. So to show that the stack is working, let's add an optional third person camera. I'll add a handle 3D node into the player scene and position it where I would want the virtual camera to be. A trick I like to use is to add a camera node underneath so I can get a preview of that position. Make sure to remove the camera when you're done though. Now we can change the code of the player controller to wait for an input and add or remove a virtual camera to that handle 3D node we placed earlier. With that set up, now pressing the button will switch us into a third person view and pressing it again will revert to a first person view. This kind of system is fairly simple, but you could extend it to work with all kinds of different purposes. A neat trick is that you can animate a virtual camera, and when you load that animation, it will play a cutscene, but you can set it up in the same level without needing to make a new scene. Thanks for watching. I hope this tutorial was helpful, and don't forget to subscribe. Thank you especially to my supporters on Ko-fi.